Taking a piece of ground and, and taking it from you know an average producing farm and turn it into a high producing farm. And so that's kind of what we're able to do that here in two ways. And now we're able to do that with through tile in a field that's a wet farm, or we're able to either you know like we like we talked about here is we've found a farm that's a, a sandy farm, but we can irrigate it. So we've increased the production out of, out of both of those farms. So that's kind of what we really enjoy doing, I guess. Is. Meet Joel Lang a transplant from Nebraska, whose father moved the family to a new farm in Iowa. From irrigated fields on the edge of Nebraska's sand hills to a new life in the heart of the Corn Belt, it was a life Joel wasn't sure he wanted. Right, yeah, so when I graduated high school, I really did not think I wanted to farm. So I joined the Marine Corps, and I was in the reserves there for a few years, and uh, I realized, you know, that after not having the freedom of being your own boss or whatever and getting told what to do, that I really wanted to come back to the farm and I and I really did miss it. And so when I decided that, that's that kind of made dad think, I think, hey, what's the future for these kids of mine if they want to continue to farm? The Langs moved from Nebraska to Iowa for a simple reason. In Iowa, they found water. So so part of the specifics of not being so dependent on irrigation, it was uh, water regulation in the state of Nebraska. And uh, you know, if you get into the southern part of Nebraska, they're regulated how many inches you could have. Well, in the northern part where we were at, we didn't have those regulations as of yet, but uh, we had a lot sandier land. So if you didn't have the inches of water, you weren't be, you're not gonna raise a crop that you could raise normally. You know, you're not gonna raise corn, you're gonna raise wheat or something like that, so. Iowa has it all, rain, temperature, humidity, a perfect climate for corn. I uh, really like the, uh, there's, we get really good rainfall. We're, we're pretty much, we're west central Iowa technically, but we're, we're central Iowa. So we get great rainfall, great growing temperatures, good humidity, um, got a lot of good grain markets in the area. Where Joel farms, there is an abundance of value added grain markets. So around us, we have four ethanol, ethanol plants within 40 miles of our farm and we also have a, a corn processor for food grade corn. We've got you know five I guess good end users of crops. So none of our grain goes to a local elevator. It all goes to an end user. So that's really increased the, the value we get out of our crop. Joel also has found an opportunity to produce and sell non-GMO soybeans with a healthy premium of one dollar and fifty cents per bushel. The reason we did that is because our local co-op had some really good programs and gave some good good uh, prices for those uh, non-GMO beans. So we're just kind of starting into that. I think it's going to be an every year thing for a while at least. And uh, it's given us a nice premium for our crop. You know, it's, it's adding, you know, a dollar fifty to the crop. So that, uh, that helps a lot when, when times are a little tough right now, so. The farm is 1,600 acres. It might grow. But today, Joel and his brother Stephen are focused on making the ground they farm more productive. To really expand and we have to do it by either purchasing land or making what we have more, you know, more productive. So what we did is we went out and in Iowa, everybody's got to tile everything it seems like. And, and uh, we're, we went out and bought a tile plow and started tiling some farms. And we're going to continue um, to tile until we, you know, tile the whole farm, everything, you know, pattern tile it. We're trying to get our farm all to kind of a really high production type of situation. So that way we don't have to go out and rent more ground and, and continue that cycle of giving high rent and getting poor quality land and not making a great return. So that's kind of our. The key to higher crop production is soil health and soil health for us here is definitely gonna mean better water infiltration, um, better higher organic matter levels, and uh, just you know better biological activity of the soil. Those three things I think is gonna be a, a big benefit for higher yields. Speaking of more, Joel and his wife Tanner are raising a busy family. So uh, we've had uh, Four kids, so we have two sets of twins. So we have uh, the older boys, uh, Brecken and Brantley, uh, they're three and a half. And then we have uh, Carson and Callie, they're uh, about a year and a half now. Really had to uh, figure out how we're gonna have this work-life balance type thing and with the farm involved, and that's, and that's not easy to do when, 
when you have four little ones. It's been a long journey, but it's been fun, and uh, they love the farm. What of Joel's and his family's Lang Farms Precision Ag? There is one key important to this farm's future. Pay attention to the land. Um, learn more about the land than just what kind of seed should I buy or what kind of equipment should I own. Really pay attention to soil health and, and how to improve the property that you do have and make it better for the next generation. I guess that's one thing that we're trying to do, you know, by increasing production, it's, we're trying to make it better for our next generation here. So that's, uh, I guess, one thing that I really want to teach my kids is, is to really love and care for the land.